the songs and he is the reason for the season. He is the reason why we celebrate. Born in the manger, he came our Savior. Love is the reason why Jesus came. They say that's the still based on the Lord's
church. And he had a son that was just about marriage age. And everybody was wondering who the son would marry. There were so many nice women in the church, so education, finance. Uh, they all wondered who he was going to marry. And uh, when he announced who he was going to marry, it was a woman who was known as a prostitute in the city. She had a bad reputation. And, and, and everybody was wondering why this preacher's son would marry the well-known prostitute. And so they asked the preacher, said, why did your son, out of all these eligible women in the church, Pick this woman who was a street woman, a wild old and prostitute. And the father said, well, look, my son is a lady, ask him. So on that next church meeting day, the son got up. He said, I, you all have been asking my father why I picked the woman that I picked to marry. He said, but that wasn't no real question. He said, your real question is, can the blood of Jesus wash away this prostitute's sin? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the what? Blood of Jesus. Stand to your feet with me right now. Everybody stand to your feet and say to the person on your right hand, it is no sin. Come on, say it like you mean it. Somebody on your right hand. Say the hand with your hand and no secret. What God can do. And the world will think about it. What he's done to others, he can do for you. Now turn to the person on your left and say, it is no secret. What God can do. And the world will think about it. What he's done for that prostitute. Chapter 20 and verse number 1. 
And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God that has brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other goals before me. Say it, read it again. Thou shalt have no other before me. But what we have done is taken that word God out of there and said, let us have no other goal before me. And we put all of our goals in place. And our goals have gotten in the way of doing what God told us to do. And he said, I'm coming back and we all around here thinking that we have plenty of time. I'm not going to be long this morning, but I want to tell you, as I was reading this week, there are 1,100 scientists in the United Nations, and these scientists have been tracking global warming conditions around the world. And what shocked me was that, as I read it, they said, the world has 11 years to fix it, or else this world will not be inheritable by human beings. 11 years. And I saw that I couldn't, you know, it was a shock to me. These people are scientists, and they are tracking things all over the world. And they say, what is happening is that this global warming is killing off all of these low insects and microorganisms that it takes to produce food. You know, back in, in science, if you, if you have plants, you got to have some kind of bee or, you know, or something to pollinate the plants. Well, all these little things are being destroyed, and half of them that existed in the world have already been destroyed. And so they're saying we got 11 years to get it right, to stop this thing from finishing, destroying all of these organisms. Otherwise, we won't be able to live in this world. Now, what's going to happen to all the houses and the land and the cars and all of that stuff? After 11 years, you can't inhabit it. You can't live with it. And I got to thinking about what Jesus did in Matthew 24. Let's turn quickly to the book of Matthew. Matthew in the New Testament, the 24th chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And it made sense to me what these scientists were saying based on what I have been reading in the Bible. Matthew 24 and verse 15. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world unto a, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the what? With all of this new technology, with all of these new smartphones, and all of these new computers, and all of these new gadgets, this gospel is going to be preached in all the world. And it's going to finish up soon. We've forgotten it. We don't study the word of God enough to realize what is happening. Love and truth. I'm not putting the time on it. God says no man knows the day or the hour. I'm not putting the time on it. But when I see what the Bible says and when I see what technology is doing, well, they're experimenting with all kinds of new gene technology and all of this stuff with DNA and what they can do about it. It lets me know knowledge has increased. And Matthew 24 says, This gospel shall the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. And then I go back to Daniel 12 4. Let's go back there with me, right after the book of Ezekiel, Daniel 12, 4. And I, and, I, and I thought about this, I said, I couldn't get up here and preach something different, but, but the Bible, the Holy Spirit said, no, you're going to tell them like it 
clear. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, you read this over and over, but it's not sinking in. But now, O oh Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the what? Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be what? There is more knowledge in the world today than ever before. There was a little bit now, I was talking to him one day, and we were talking about how to fix something on the car. And I said, never give it to you, you know how to do it. He said, look, I don't know how to do it, but I know how to get up on the internet, and they'll tell me how to do it. And there was a little bit and I got up on the internet, and sure enough, we found out how to do it. I was talking to Osa one time, and Osa and I were talking about how to hang something up on the wall. And I said, well, I don't know if these modern books or these kind of books are missing that don't worry about. I get up on the internet and I find out. And she got up on the internet, and sure enough, anything you want to know, you can get up on the internet now and just about find it. The Bible says, in the time of the end, knowledge would be increased. Never ever had a situation like that before. You want to know something about the color of hair or, or, or what kind of clothes or what? Get up on the internet, you'll find it. The Bible wasn't playing when it, Jesus said knowledge would be increased, and it's increasing rapidly, rapidly doubling every few months. Even my grandchildren. I, I was talking to Nicholas one day, and Nicholas said, oh, man, you, look, I get up on the internet and find it out. Sure he does. They got these phones now that can talk to you. You can come into your house, and you can talk to your wife and say, come on. They'll come on. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas, who made me so, I had to laugh. He got in there and started talking to this thing, and, and, and was carrying on a conversation with me. And he was carrying on a conversation with him. <laughs> Nick said, well, who made you? And it paused. He couldn't answer that question. What am I trying to say? <laughs> Knowledge is increasing, folks. Jesus is about to come. We've forgotten our main mission. Tell the world, he's coming, he's coming soon. And they got about to be a judge. Holy Spirit, I had the Holy Spirit to tell you what to say. I got nine pages, but I don't think I'm going to use any of them. But look, listen, listen. Don't forget it. You leave out of here today. Jesus is about to come. He's about to come soon. And we got to tell the world. Now, how do we tell the world? Let's go to a little story. And this story is about a young lady named Mary. Somebody turn with me to the book of Luke, the seventh chapter. I'm going to skip most of my message, but I'm going to say this because I'm going to let you go. I did that in time for the Christmas party this week. Luke 7 37. Matthew, Mark, what else? Luke 12, 7 37. It's in the New Testament. In verse 37. And one of the, behold, a woman in the city, read it with me, which was a what? When she knew that Jesus said and meeting the Pharisees out by the alabaster box of what? And she stood at his feet behind him doing what? And began to do what? With her what? And wiped them with her of her what? And he did what? And what? I started out of this service and they let your hair down, but the Holy Spirit is just going to go against your legs. If I told you to let your hair down, some of you women would know what I'm talking about. Maybe men wouldn't know, but the women would. But I want to talk about this young lady named Mary for a few minutes, and then I'm going to let you go out. Mary was in this house of this church member for them. You know how we go home for dinner? And everybody was there in a good time, and Mary comes in, and they look at her, and Mary walks over and stands behind Jesus. 
And everybody knows that this woman is a sinner, and she starts crying. And some of the men in the house begin to murmur because her tears start falling down on his feet. And she took her hair and started wiping his feet. Anytime you get ready to do something for God, people are going to start mumbling. I'm saying that for all these new officers that they've elected for the year 2020. Anytime you get ready to do your thing, do what God has called you to do, work in your position, somebody in the church is going to start mumbling. In like fact, the, the, the men, and if you read, and I'm, and I'm asking everybody in the church to form friendships with two people in 2020. If you don't get anything else out of this sermon, I want you to make two new friends in 2020. Not members of the church, but two people that are not members of the church. Now, some of you all probably don't have any friends, so we're going to have to teach you how to make friends. But, the goal is to make two friends. So everybody in the church is working. It's not just the, the preacher, it's not just the elder, it's not just the deacons, but everybody in the church is working. You follow me? You make two friends, and then I'm going to ask you to bring them to every kind of activity in the church day. If we have a Christmas party, bring them. If we have a, a, a choir concert, a choir is going to stay, bring them. And then we want you to keep track of every activity that you bring them to. Now I'm telling you, because the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this. I told you I got nine pages, but I'm not looking at them. The Holy Spirit said, this is what you tell them. You bring two people, and you work with these two people. You don't even have to tell them anything about the Bible. Just make two people friends. People you out have something in common with, common ground with, interest with. Maybe you don't do anything to go shopping with. For the next three months, you go shopping with them. Or they may be a bowler. You, go, you, know, you just go bowling with them for three months. Don't tell them anything about the Bible. Don't tell them anything about the Sabbath. Just go be a friend with them for three months. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? Just be friends with them. And during this Christmas season, you see, this is the season of what? Yes. Giving. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Now, somebody put, put uh, Acts 1-8 up here on, on, on the screen for me. I, I, I got, the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you this. Acts 1-8. We've been repeating this a whole year. <laughs> Two years. Acts 1-8. Acts 1-8. I'm going to show you what the Holy Spirit told me about what we have been doing. And sometimes you, know, you can be in the church thinking you're doing what's right, but you're doing what's wrong. You ever heard of Paul, Saul, persecuting people in the church? Not even doing what was right, but they were doing what was wrong. Now, what we are doing wrong? But ye shall do what? When? And then ye shall be. What we have been doing, we've been repeating this verse. And jumping up, going out, trying to go. We have people to cry, but we have never stopped and said, it doesn't say do that. This verse doesn't say do that. It says, first, you get the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're going to be content to come to church week after week to listen to the choir sing, listen to the preacher preach, and go back home. And that's what's wrong with all people. And, and the reason I know, because many times I'm standing over there with Brother David Moore, standing and I'm urchin, and I look out and I see all these young seats. And I see the members dropping off. And the Holy Spirit say, the reason it's dropped off is because long you have done that Holy Spirit. We know everything. We're running off trying to do everything. We got all these beautiful plans and all these different things that we want to do, but we don't have the Holy Spirit. So the next three weeks, for the rest of these 
I'm going to ask you to do something else. I'm going to challenge you. I want you to read the last four chapters in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Don't get mad with me. I'm just the messenger. Just let the Holy Spirit tell me what to you read these last four chapters on the last days of Jesus Christ on this earth as he was led through his trial, through his crucifixion, and his resurrection. And then I want you to think about it. Think about every character that you're going to run across. And look, don't try to read all these in one day. You're going to read one chapter in the morning, one at noon, at lunchtime, and one in the evening. And just think about it. Jesus, turn your eyes on Jesus and look at him in his face and see him every step of the way leading up to his crucifixion. And his death, his trial. The Holy Spirit said to me, you need to know this because when the time of trouble comes, you're going to have to go through some of the same things that Jesus went through. And you never learn how to live with it and deal with it Look at his life. Look at what they did. They crowned him with some thorns. They took a big whip and whooped him all night long. Smack, spit on his face. Slapped him round the face. Upside down the head. And then you pray. And this is what you pray for. This is courage. First you confess your sins. And don't get mad at me. I know what you saying. Confess your sins. I don't know what they are. You, you only know what your sins are. But the first step is to confess your sins. You want the Holy Spirit? You want the Holy Ghost to come into your life? Pray. Confess your sins. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Then pray that the Holy Spirit will make you into the woman or the man or the boy or girl that God wants you to be. Not what the pastor wants you to be. Not what the other age wants you to be. But pray that the Holy Spirit will make you into the man or the woman or the boy or girl that God wants you to be. And then look at the life of Mary, the sinner. The men murmured or complained about because she was pouring this expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. And this woman, though, listen to me. This is what's so amazing about this woman. And I'm about, I'm about to close in about three minutes, four minutes. This woman who is pouring this expensive perfume on Jesus' feet did something that Jesus took note of. And he said some words. He said, what this woman did today is going to be repeated over and over and over and over and over all the way around the world. What did this woman do? She was kind. One act of what? Kind. We say, I love Jesus. You tell your wife or your husband, I love you. But you don't ever be kind to them. What are they going to say? Kindness is putting love into action. Kindness makes love action. Anybody can say, I love you, but very few people can be kind to you. And not only what you do, the kindness means how you do it. It's not only what you say, but how you say it. Can you be kind to somebody? Well, the fourth thing I'm going to ask you to do this year is to put the laws of kindness, the kindness initiative, in the action. Every month, you're going to do something kind to somebody. Is that too much to ask? No, right People may never remember your name, but if you stopped on the highway when they ran out of gas, you said, look, I'll take you up 
and I'll take them to the gas station and buy you some gas and you pay for it and you bring them back to that car. You think they'll ever forget that? People don't forget kindness. They can't argue against that. And so for the next three months, you're going to be kind to people. Be kind to The Holy Spirit tell me to close this up. Do the square thing for me. Come on, Lord. Look, you can do this. I don't have no secrets for him. All I'm doing is that God talk to me, and he's telling me what to say. I got nine pages of notes that I'm not even talking about. You can do it because God is with you. You can be kind. You can make two new friends. Don't say you can't do it. Listen to this song. It's not your battle. It's not your battle. All you got to do is surrender your will. Surrender your life. Change your goals. The battle is not yours. The battle is already been won. When Jesus was hanging on that cross and he said, Eli, Eli, I'm not the battle. I'm
about the judgment. He said, not only is he coming back, not only is he coming back soon, but he said there's going to be a judgment. But I'm going to tell you how you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to be saved or not. You can walk out here today and you'll be assured that you will be in the heaven one day. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. What book did I say? Matthew 25th chapter. He didn't say that and stand before him and recite the 2300 day prophecy. He didn't say that and stand before him and tell the Beatitudes or the, the, the Lord's prayer. Here's what God's going to call you in the judgment. You want to know what God's called? Read with me right now, Matthew 25, verse number 32. Verse 31, 31, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. And talk about the judgment of all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered how many people? How many? And he shall do what? One from a what? And a shepherd of what? And he shall set them the sheep on his what? And the goats on his what? Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye what? Inherit, come on now, inherit what? Prepare 
that we ever pray that the Holy Spirit coming in this church, coming in every individual, and every boy and every girl that are man for Let's die. Father God, we come this evening. We know, Father, you say that we love you. And you know every heart and mind and soul that's in here, Father. We ask you to rain down your Holy Ghost on each of and every one of us. And Father, in that crowd, you spell not, you say crowd, and you spell not, and try it out. I'm asking you this evening for Longview, and not only for Longview only, but for every church. Those that are members of everybody of believers, we ask that you would rain down your Holy Spirit upon us, Father. Cleanse our mind and cleanse our heart. And then, Father, put a burden in our soul that we might look up to heaven and follow your lead, Father. You are the master. You are our guide. You are our teacher. Most of all, Father, you saved us when we couldn't save ourselves. And, Father, as you look on us today, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. You said if you ask, you will give according to your will, Father. And if it's in your will this evening, Father, save everyone under the sound of my weak voice. And I'm asking you to create in all of us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Bless those, Father, that are in here today. Keep us where we can't keep ourselves. Bless those that are in every hospital room, every jail cell, every member of the two Father. Because you love every soul, Father. You say all souls are mine, but the soul that sent it, it shall die. So save us to the uttermost, that we might glorify your name, and you be soon to come.